Thank you, dog. It's Friday. Yep. Hey, thank you, dog. Yep. <laughs> Super happy to see you, everybody. We're uh, actually not live today because I'm probably currently in the car traveling, so <laughs> cannot be here with you. But due to the magic and miracle of technology, <laughs> we are recording this so that I can be with everybody. And Hillary and I can do our fun Think Dog It's Friday craft like we always do. So yeah. we're super excited. And I am hanging out in the comments right now. So if you have questions, if you want to comment anything, I'm there. So lurking in, me the, in the future <laughs> is there. <laughs> exactly. I'll be there uh, exactly. waiting and listening if you have any questions. Perfect. Great. Thank you for doing that too, Hillary. That really helps, um, you know, when I have some family obligations and need to get be on the road. So thank you so much, everybody. And hello, hello, if you're joining us, we're super excited to have you here. And if you're watching the replay, we love to have you here as well. Uh, we've got a, a super fun, uh, really clever and adorable idea today to share with you. Uh, we have little garden guard dogs that we're going to be <laughs> making. Um, I guess we could call them our, your personalized pup planter. So if you're <laughs> if you're into container gardening, we're going to make a personalized puppy dog that's all, all about you, um, that you can put plants and flowers and all that kind of good stuff in. So I think the first thing we start with is a terracotta part, pot. And um, I have one that's about six inches tall. I think both Hillary and I have like the six inch size and you'll need two of them. One for the upper part of the dog's body and then one for the lower part of the dog's body basically. And then we kind of got started a little bit ahead of time because it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> <Quite literally. laughs> so you paint really is these are simple instructions. You paint this is the next step and so I started with a white body and then put some brown markings um, for wherever you want your brown spots to be. And uh, you can use a pencil if you want to, like if you're going to mark out certain points, you can just lightly draw on a pencil. It's very easy to draw on these terracotta pots. You don't need to do it super dark or anything like that. But just to give you a little bit of guideline as you're painting and I have some kind of different areas where I've left a little bit and then I have this kind of gold all of mine I um ended up using metallics because that's what I had on hand <laughs> so we're going that's with fine metallics. yeah exactly whatever you've got I've got a couple colors here kind of an off-white and a let's see a chestnut brown and then I've got just some samples that you can get real inexpensively like two or three dollars at Lowe's um, with some other colors that that you might need and then here's my base as well. So you can draw on little puppy puppy toes if you wanted. We've both got a little collar and mine's gonna be clover. So I made a little clover, a little um, ta doggy tag on there. Um, so yeah, we can, and you can customize them just for whatever color scheme your dog has, wherever their spots are or yeah. all the colorings are. So really sky's the limit. Um, it's a lot of fun. And we're gonna finish up our little faces today. Um, again, just it was easier just to get a little bit of a head start. Oh, and that's Lulu. <laughs> Adorable So Lulu. I do have, have it sketched out, but I've started with the eyes. So um, sketched out her little nose and mouth, and then uh, we'll be doing some outlining around her little white markings and stuff like that as well. Perfect. And then here's my little clover. Aww. So you can see the pencil sketch for the nose and tongue and mouth area. And we both of us did our eyes just not too long ago just to get get things started. But yeah. yeah. And I have a my technique isn't fully covered. I wanted it kind of to be real rustic looking. So really anything goes. You don't have to be perfect perfect about anything. If you want it just kind of more dappled looking or or brindle in color, you can do that. If you want it if you like it more solid and that's easier for you, yeah, that's beautiful. So whatever whatever style you want to go with. Again, this is your personality and and whatever you like. And one of the things when you're um, looking for either the markings or how to make them or the face and how to make that, a great place to go is just Google Images or a, and yeah. look for an illustration or a cartoon and a really simplified one right. because it's going to be, you know, it's you're not going to have quite as much 
uh, surfaces where you can kind of shade unless you really get detailed with it. But I would okay. recommend keeping it pretty simple because yeah. they're going to be the shape of pots. So right. it's got to kind exactly. of work with that. <laughs> yeah. And, and coloring really book yeah. images work really yeah. well. Like you could type in, you know, Bassett coloring book or Beagle coloring book images and things like that or drawings. And then that'll really give you some good ideas. So that was a great tip, Hillary. Thanks. Um, that really helps. So I guess um, the next step then is just to finish up painting. So we'll just, we'll do that. And you could do this, uh, um, we're both painting. I'm using just a fine tipped uh, paintbrush and my black metallic paint. But you could also, as Patty did with her little feet, you could use a Sharpie. And if that's easier, you could use a fine tip Sharpie or just a regular, you know, marker ended Sharpie. And that might be an easy way to get that face on there as well. Right. Right. And I, I do have some of the details uh, for my clover pot in um, black paint, but then some of them I went ahead and drew because here, let me sh I'll show everybody. So this is her tail. So <laughs> she has a white tail, but she always had this brown spot near the back of her. So that's kind of, you know, my way of kind of being able to show a white tail, just easy just to do a black outline in the in the Sharpie marker. And then I obviously did the, the feet and I'll probably do a little bit of outline on the face as well, I think in the marker. But it's the warmth of the paint is so nice wherever yeah. you can um, use paint. And I would suggest doing that. And if since mine is metallic, it kind of, the Sharpie is a little too flat with everything else being a little bit shiny for mine. So that that was sort of the reasoning behind not using a Sharpie for me. And these are turning out so cute. And as you kind of start working on the details of the face, they really come to life. Um, it's just fun to see. So I've got her nose done. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it's amazing. Just one little a detail and all of a sudden, like their personality starts to come out. All right. And I'm going to do a little pink tongue. I'm terrified I'm going to open up one of these jars and end up having paint. Like, just <laughs> Get to wear it. <laughs> all over me. <laughs> so let's see. Another just another little fine tip brush. Like Hillary's using. And these are so cute. You could have your kids make these. Um, you could fill up, oh my gosh, if you had like one for every pup, right? I mean, mm. that would just be and you lined your patio with all these little doggy planters, wouldn't that be just so that would cute? Be horrible. Oh my gosh. That would be precious. So, yeah, I posted in uh, uh, on the page the other day, somebody has 11 basset hounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. In that huge rocking chair. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was just awesome. I had to share that. That looks like basset heaven. <laughs> be a lot of fun. We had... Leon was trying to relax this morning, but Lulu was having her bassitude and <laughs> <laughs> wasn't having any of it, wasn't letting him relax one little bit. <laughs> oh. I can only imagine 11. <laughs> I know, I know, really. Seriously, that's crazy. Crazy good, crazy good. Yep. All right. Okay, so I got my little, my little tongue painted. Oh, I love your nose. That's so cute. With a little highlight on there. Yeah. And I'm going to do her. so sweet. Little mouth. And I got to, I think I got to wait for the paint to dry. And then I'm going to come back and kind of trace the other little mouth parts on a little line down the center of the tongue and, and all that stuff. The paint does dry pretty quickly on terracotta, which I was, 
I've never done that before. I've never painted a pot before. So I was surprised how quickly it really does get absorbed um, into the terracotta. And these and are really, oh, go ahead. Yeah. If you're using like metallics or something like that, it, it does soak them up pretty well, but that second coat really starts to let up. So you may need more than one coat to mm -hmm. get your colors to be as vibrant as you were hoping for. But uh, it, after you have that first coat down, it does really start to pop yeah. after that. So don't yeah. get too worried if you're like, wow, my colors don't look anything like I thought they were going to. Once right. you get one down, it'll probably vibe get more vibrant as you add more coats. Right. And I only did one coat because I wanted to see yep. some of the pot through it. But what I think I might do is um, varnish. Um, oh. That will, I think, help protect it a little bit longer. I mean, if you don't care and you want it to be weathered, you don't need to do that step. But I have a feeling in order to kind of protect the paint that's there. And I don't I honestly don't know what rain on a sharpie marker on a painted terracotta pot will do <laughs> so <laughs> varnish might help protect all of that so um, again it's it's totally up to you you don't have to do that step but that'll protect it i think a little bit more yeah and if you're doing the sort of solid painted like this mm -hmm. you have a little bit more protection right so. right Exactly. And I'm mine is a multi-surface paint. It's, it's acrylic, but it's a multi-surface acrylic. So okay. I think multi-surface is probably a good way to go uh, for for the paint. But yeah, I think honestly, mine's... you can give anything a try. See how yeah. it works for you. Yep. And these pots are like a dollar at yep. Walmart. Like they're not expensive. expensive. Yeah. yeah. So. You can always start over or try again or make a dozen because you have a dozen pups at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's still an inexpensive, fun craft to, to do. Um, so you working on her little mouth? I'm just working on her little highlight on her nose. Oh, okay, on her nose. You've added all those little extra details, which really does add a lot of character too. It really helps bring out the personality, which is nice. It makes it look that much more special. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's sweet. That's so, so sweet. I will go through after a little bit and just outline around any of the details and okay. her little belly and her yeah. mouth as well. Yeah. So that'll help it kind of stand out. And on just with this style, I'm thinking kind of a light outline, but depending on what style you're making your dog, yeah. you can go really bold, really thick, like right. really. Well, you don't need to at all, really. Yep. I mean, yeah, if you yep. didn't want to, it looks really just so sweet as is even. So, all right, now the fun part, <laughs> <laughs> floppy ears. So what I've got is uh, some leatherette, so you can get some like vinyl based fake leather if you want or so yeah, yeah. i i happen has... to have some uh, so i think She's... i would wrap these ones is having it at least a little bit protected from the elements and things yeah. like that if you're putting it outside so that when you're doing your ears just think mm -hmm. about where you want it and pick the material accordingly so right, that it right. withstand whatever right. I think a covered area. porch area would probably be ideal. Obviously, it would help protect it from the weather and the elements longer. Um, but wherever wherever you want these, obviously, you can put them. Um, and you could use felt, too. Um, so you, if you don't have leather or uh, a leather, fake leather product, leather, you know, like yeah. I'm trying, leatherette, <laughs> whatever they call this stuff, um, then, yeah, you can use felt, too. So whatever you've got at home. So we're going to just hot glue these in place. And I actually think I've got Lulu's ears over here. <laughs> these are not clover <laughs> ears, but I wanted big floppy ears. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to glue these on. And part of the reason we have the body and the head still separate 
is um, because it's just easier to work with the details on the face and all that while while you're still doing that. And so you can you end up kind of doing that part last. This is a really cute project. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to just kind of see where I'm placing this. I think this will work. Roughly. And I ended up painting inside my pot just a little bit. Um, just thought once a plant gets in there, then you don't see the terracotta, but it's totally up to you. You can just paint the edge. I think that's what yeah, Hillary's I painted done. the rim there, so I do think painting the rim helps at the very least paint the rim because I do think it helps finish it off yeah. uh, for for what you're doing. And you could also um, these are an adorable detail, obviously, but if you're worried about them being able to withstand wherever you're going to put it, you could also paint your ears on as well. Yeah. So yeah, true. Yeah, you can paint all the details if you wanted to. These are so cute. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I love them. I love them. <laughs> Yours turned out so cute. <laughs> <laughs> They're so funny. I just love big floppy ears. I'm a, a, definitely a hound <laughs> lover at heart. <laughs> All hounds need to have just ears that they're tripping over, right? They just like, those are the best ears in the whole world. And then when you see them run and they're flying in the air, like that's like the best thing it's ever. The so. Most adorable. Or the helicopter ears when yeah. they're shaking. Exactly. Like, <laughs> poop, 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 poop. yeah, exactly. So anyway, had lots of fun. Just really the last step is just hot gluing the two pots together, which we will do uh, once we finish some of the other finer details on the face. Uh, but aren't these just so precious? They're so cute. And again, you could just line up your patio with these and just make them, they make you smile every day, yep. right? And if your kids or your grandkids are doing these and they set out on your back porch, even more so. So hope this inspires everybody to do something fun this weekend and um, would love to see, as always, if you put something like this together, oh my gosh, just all the different personalities that you put together with your your personalized pup planter we would absolutely love to see please share that yeah we would love to see how they turn out so yeah exactly and then um if you want to keep informed on anything that we've got going on in the future a great way to do that is to sign up to our mailing list we'll wow. have a link for how to do that in this post so you can you can do that easily and we'll just keep you informed of anything we heart hounds related that we've got going on right exactly and don't forget we have a giveaway so by all means it's at the top of our we heart hounds page be sure to enter it's super easy all you need is just to enter your email address and you're in and it's a beautiful bundle of all kinds of goodies we are just super excited for you to try and win i'm <laughs> i'm so excited it's going like gangbusters we've got lots of people entering but um you know you can't win if you don't try so we <laughs> hope you get in there and you're the biggest winner of all and we'd be happy to brag on you all day long so anyway thank you so much everybody for your time today we truly appreciate each and every one of you we really do from the bottom of our hearts Think a dog, it's Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you, you later. Bye-bye.